What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how you can be a more creative wide receiver and route runner. So we're going to be going over three specific routes here and how you guys can add these tools to your own routes to get you more separation. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope you can learn something from it. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and you would like 200 plus wide receiver drills to do on a day-to-day -day basis, mapped out on a daily and weekly schedule for you with sets, reps, and a video example of each drill, check out that very first link in the description below for our eight-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule. You guys get a ton of value for your route running, press releases, hands, the work. So very first link below, fellas. Let's get started. So this first router is going to be from Stefan Diggs, and he's going to be running this like stutter, go, stop route, where he puts the brakes on, he's able to come back to this ball and win on this route with a lot of separation. So I think the key to being a creative route runner is you have to make your routes look the same. You hear a lot of wide receivers talk about this. A lot of wide receiver coaches talk about this, but what does it actually mean? So you see when Diggs comes off of here, we got obviously inside shade press. So if you're running a route like a stop route, or like some people call this like a hinge route, there are a lot of different names for this route. If you're running this stop route, we want to make it look like what? A fade, right? Now that's that kind of the basic day one stuff. I would teach that to a seven-year-old wide receiver and I would teach that to a 27-year-old wide receiver. You have to make every single route look like a nine. Now where it gets creative and where you could add some different tools to your tool belt is making that stop route not only look like a nine, but look like another route that you may have ran. And that is this stutter go. So maybe a couple times with this DB, maybe he's seen it on film. We've ran like a little stutter go. So that puts him kind of like on the on alert, right? He's seen that stutter go before. We've ran it before. So he's ready to react to it. So we burst to the outside and you say, well, he gives this little stutter. He actually sits in the chair. He changes his speed. He actually sits down because that's what alerts this DB. That makes his routes look the same. You're pairing your routes together. So then when he bursts up and it's time to get to the depth, that DB is expecting that stutter go. He's seen it before. Maybe we've ran it on him. Maybe you're backside on a route and you've actually been working this. This doesn't even necessarily have to be in your playbook. So now when I get him to push up to the depth, I got his hips to flip. I got him thinking stutter go and I can snap down and put the brakes on to get out of this route. That is a textbook route here from Stefan Diggs and that is exactly how you would want to make your routes look the same. Now, another example of this that maybe you could do is maybe a couple times I come off the ball, say I had this inside shade look, and let's say I have to run like a slant. So if you're running a slant against inside shade press, all you should probably know this if you're familiar with the videos, is that you would do like a diamond release, right? So you would go, you'd step with your right foot, left foot, right. You'd break off the right and slip underneath, got the DB to flip his hips. So now maybe instead, I pair the routes together. Instead of doing a diamond release, let's say I have to run a fade, I step with my right foot left foot, right foot again, I act like I'm planning and I throw an inside cut with the left foot and then I burst up on the fade. That's just an example. That's just something that you guys can maybe add to your tool belt as well. But creative route runners, guys who are the best at what they do, they make their routes look the same. Not just about selling fade, but it's about making their routes look the same. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Diggs doing the stutter, go, breaking right off on that stop route. All right, so now, this is a clip here from Ocho Cinco. This is some practice film of him. And um, one thing I want to talk about in terms of his route running is his stride. So I think a lot of wide receivers don't get this. And it, and it comes down to, be, to being a great route runner. It, it's all about being a salesman. That's everything. We talked a little bit about this in the first clip. You have to be able to sell what on every route? A fade. You got to make this DB think nine. That's the Because when he's running fast, he does not have the reaction time that we have because he doesn't know when the break is. It's actually pretty simple. He is playing a guessing game. He is reacting off of us, but if I don't give him anything to react early, I should win every single route. So it's not about what the DB does right. It's about what we do wrong as a wide receiver. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that wide receivers will make, and that's changing their stride. So I'm going to play this full speed. So this is Ocho Cinco, and I want you to pay attention to his stride going into the break. There was not a single choppy step that this guy took, maybe at the very top of the break. But a wide receiver... Wide receivers are very dangerous when they can do this. DBs pay attention to a couple things, and I call them indicators. So the second way to be you know, an artist of your craft, be a great route runner, is you have to eliminate the indicators. So when he's going up into this break, he gives this little move outside, he takes the inside release. One of the main indicators is slowing your stride or shortening your stride. So a lot of wide receivers can run hard. They think they're selling fade. They think they're running fast. But when they make this break point, when they get about five yards out, their stride length starts to shorten because they're preparing for the break. Because it's much easier. When you're taking choppy steps going into a route, it is very easy to put the brakes on because you're slowing yourself down. But when it, from a DB perspective, that's easy work. 
If he's off coverage, if he's man-to-man, hip right on your hip and man coverage. When you take choppy steps, that's easy to settle on. But you watch Ocho Cinco when he does this full stride. Everything is full stride, and he's able to break in full stride. That is something that not enough wide receivers do. They will run up and chop their steps. Or better yet, they'll just slow their speed down. They might be taking full strides, but they'll slow down. Or they will raise their pad level. All three of those things make the break easier. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's gonna be, you're going to have a very easy time getting out of the break. You'll probably get out in the least amount of steps possible. You'll probably get out in, in two steps even. But the DB's all over it. If, you, if that DB slows down and you're giving him that clear-cut indicator of when you're going to make a break, a talented guy will be all over that. It won't even be a problem for him. But if you can make it look like a nine with your body language, with your speed, with your stride, like you see from Ocho Cinco right here, that is very, very tough to guard, and that is where we get the most separation. That's textbook right there. Let's watch the thing again, fellas, one more time. Great job by attacking outside taking the inside release, pushing vertical, and putting the brakes on right now to win on that specific route. Okay, so now last example here. This is another example from Stefan Diggs. So main thing I want to talk about is that when you are running a double move, you have to be prepared, or, or honestly just in anything when it comes to being a wide receiver, you have to be prepared to react. So a great route runner is a great, like has great reaction time, if you will, whether that's against off coverage or whether that's against press coverage. So Stefan Diggs is going to be running a dig and go. So he's going to snap down, take a few steps on this dig and then push back up vertical. But the DB is in a spot that we did not expect him to be at after the break. So we have to react as a wide receiver. So let's play this full speed. He comes off the ball. He snaps down, takes the inside stem, but you see how he takes the inside on this dig and go. And naturally, you were taught to take the outside. So let's play this. Let's, let's break this down. So when he jumps up or he's attacking this DB, closing the distance, puts the brakes on, right? Snapping down in full stride. Now, when he takes those steps to the inside to sell the dig, this DB sits to the outside. So rather than just forcing it to the outside, rather than putting the brakes on here and driving outside right into this DB, he takes a second cut and takes the inside release almost. I, I wouldn't call it a release, but he takes the inside of the DB. That is all based on reaction. He sees that the DB's in a spot where you're not going to get the freest release. You're going to kind of force it. You're going to run into him. We don't want to do that. We want to take what the DB gives me. Playing the wide receiver position, being a great route runner is about reaction. So like, let's, let's use another example. Let's use another example here. So he's lined up like inside shade. Let's say we're running a route. Like let's say we're running a post route. So if you have to run a post route versus inside shade, what would you do? You'd attack his outside shoulder, try to get him to open up, and you'd break in front of him. But let's say we started attacking the DB's outside shoulder, and then let's say he started weaving to the outside. Let's say he just started going to the outside. Would you... You would have to react, right? You would have to put the brakes on. You wouldn't need to slip under. You wouldn't throw by. You would just break it off. Now, like, let's say for, for example, another example, let's say you have to run like a 10 yard out. So if you had this type of look, he's inside shade and you're running a 10 yard out, you would stem him, right? So you would stem him to the inside. You'd attack his midline, try to get him to weave outside. So you break and run the out. But let's say we start to stem him inside and let's say the DB starts to widen a little bit. Let's say he starts to backpedal. You wouldn't just break it off and go run into him. You'd react. You'd go attack his outside shoulder. You'd keep on the stem to try to get him to open up his hips so you could slip under. It's about taking what the DB gives you. That's what makes a great route runner. If he's lined up inside shade, you know that he's inside for a reason. He wants to prevent the inside, so we're going to have to operate out here. We're running a dig. We're running a post. We're going to have to attack out here. We're, he's inside shade, and we have to run an out route? Okay, cool. I could go attack his leverage, threaten him there to give me a bigger window outside. You have to know what to do. You have to take what the DB gives you. It is about reaction. Now, like I said, this also could have to do with press coverage. So if he walks up and let's say he's impressed right in front of you, and let's say he's inside shaded and you have to run a fade. So let's say you go to attack his leverage to the inside on the fade. But let's say when you do that, he jumps outside or he starts to like back up or maybe he, he, maybe he just tries to jump. You would take the inside release. Because it's based on what he gives you, fellas. It's not based on the route. It's based on what the DB gives you and what kind of leverage look he has. Like, let's say he's five yards off and you have to run a fade. You would go attack him, give him a move, and then preferably take the outside release. But let's say we go attack him. He starts to jump outside. 
you take the inside release. Take what the DB gives you. Do not force your routes. That is what makes a great route runner. Let's play this thing again, full speed. Great job by Diggs being able to react on the fly because most of the time, that is what the wide receiver position is. Being able to react on the fly and having those great reactionary skills. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you'd like a full eight-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule, everything wide receivers need to do on the field to improve their skills, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.